Hi guys, before we start this podcast, I just wanted to remind you that the Valentine's Day giveaway is still going on. That's why I've got my pink on, you know. Um, the Valentine's Day giveaway is still going on and the way to enter that is to leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts and I will pick a winner February 1st. I'm going to post that on my Instagram. I'm going to post who the winner is on Instagram and then I'm also going to announce it that following Friday on the podcast. So to find out if you win, you got to be following me on Instagram at Vine Philo, V-I-N-E-P-H-I-L-O. Um, or you're going to have to listen to Uh, the episode on Friday, that Friday after February 1st, to find out if you win, and then I'm going to notify the winner, and you're going to have to send me a DM, and I will get you your gift, all right? So those are the stipulations. You've got to leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts, not Spotify, because Spotify does not let me see who's left to rating, all right? So... Right. I love you very much. Getting into the episode. Hi, guys. Welcome to POV, You're My Therapist, the podcast where I vent, you listen, and you don't get paid. Um, so, per, this is actually the third time that I have recorded this podcast, if you can believe it. The first time, um, or this episode, the first time I recorded this was a couple weeks ago and I didn't like my eyelashes. So, of course, I did not use it because everything has to be perfect. I'm literally a perfectionist sometimes. So in this instance, I'm a perfectionist. Um, So I did not want to, but the first time I recorded it, I didn't use it because I I just didn't like how I looked in it. I didn't like my makeup. I didn't like a lot. There was a lot going on that I didn't like. And then the second time I recorded it, which was like two days ago, I loved it. I loved what I recorded. I thought it was hilarious. I thought it was really funny. I thought it was super real. But then when I listened to it again, when I listened to it again, I was like, no, I can't do this. I can't, I can't publish it now because I think I spoke out of a lot of anger. I spoke out of a place of a lot of anger and I just didn't really want to put that energy out there because we're all about good vibes here and uh, even though it was about, you know, men deserve hell, they really do, I just didn't want, I feel like I've spoken about it enough so I just, I feel like that would have put me in the territory of being unkind. So, um, I'll probably, you know, put it out in the future when my feelings aren't as strong as when, and when I've moved on from it. Um, or just, I've thought about making an episode where I use like the funniest bits of episodes I haven't published. Um, and literally just putting that as an episode. Um, what the heck was that noise? Or putting that as an episode. Um, just for shits and giggles, but I just didn't want to do it because I felt like it was an attack and I didn't like that. I didn't, that's not who I am. Like I can have moments of anger, but I feel like you have a moment of anger. You, you have time to watch it, to listen to yourself, to reason with yourself and you have enough time to not put out bad stuff, like to not put out bad energy. And I was like, I don't want to put this energy out there, especially when it's all so fresh. So I was like, no, um, what I am going to do instead today though, which is really exciting, I'm going to do a QA. and a I, on Instagram, at VineFilo, yes, if you're not following me, what are you doing? Um, my voice is going to crack a lot because it's dry in this room, it is so hot in this room, like I have my little water, but I really feel like I'm going to sound like a prepubescent boy all this episode, I'm really sorry about it, but it's so dry in here. But, um, but yeah, so I did a Q&A on Instagram. I asked you guys to send in questions. And so I'm going to answer these questions. And I'm actually really excited. You guys sent a lot of good fucking questions. Um, so I was thinking of, like, organizing it in a way that, like, makes sense. But, um, I did not have the time. I'm literally recording this at 9.45. My bedtime is 9 because I'm a working gear. And the damn stink bug. Um, and the, and my bedtime is in 15 minutes, so obviously it's going to take me a lot longer to get through this, but, um, but you know, I was like, I'm not going to organize this like this. I'm not going to organize this at this moment. We're just going to, we're just going to go. We're just going to shoot for it. Okay. Um, I had therapy today and you know, sometimes like I have therapy and I cry the entire session and then I'm like, damn, I wasted that whole therapy. I wasted money. I just paid somebody to watch me cry. 
um, essentially is how I feel sometimes. But then today I was like really in a good mood. So today I was in a really great mood. I didn't have a lot of complaints. Like I've actually had a pretty good week despite like, you know, some stuff that happened, but I've had a great week. Like I literally can't complain. I've had a fucking awesome week and honestly might be up there. It might be up there with, you know, maybe one of the best weeks of my life, you know, (laughs) is that dramatic? That's dramatic. Um, but it was a great fucking week. So, um, So I didn't have anything to complain about in therapy and I literally was like telling her all my wins and, and I was like, yeah, and like, look at how far I've come. Like I've done so good. Like it was a hype me session. I was hyping myself up. I had me. I was like, I was like, I'm that girl. Look at where I was a year ago. Look at where I am now. Like it was that kind of therapy session. And then at the end of it, I I was like, damn, I just paid for that. I was like, damn, I really just paid for that. I could have called my best friend, but you know, it's nice to you know, have that moment with your therapist as well. And I actually know the first question that I'm going to answer because I actually think it's a really great question to ask. Somebody fucking, and it was, of course, it was a man, okay? In this Q&A, somebody asked me, do you think you need a therapist? Bro, you are fucking new here, obviously. It was a man and there were just cars in his, and there were cars all in his profile. And he was like, do you think you need a therapist? I don't know if he was trying to be rude or what, but I'm like, yeah, I do. And I see her often. And I think you need a therapist too. So I, you're not insulting me by asking me, do you, need, do you think you need a therapist? Yeah, I do. And I think everybody and their mother needs a therapist. Don't cry out. Um, but the first question I want to answer is um, somebody asked. Hold on. They had trouble using this. Somebody asked, was it hard opening up being vulnerable with your therapist at first? Sometimes it's hard to open up to a therapist. What are some ways people can feel more comfortable going and opening up if they're scared to see a therapist for that reason? Okay, that is a fucking great question. And I think it's a great question to start this whole thing off with because I obviously I can answer that. Um, before I went to therapy, I had a friend who he told me that his first therapy session, he literally broke into tears and he cried the entire hour. He literally said it felt like washing himself with cold water. That's how much he fucking cried. And that terrified me when he said that. I was like, oh my God, you're really crazy. (laughs) When he said that, I was like, oh my God, you're, you're not. Okay. Um, but then to my own surprise, that is the exact same thing that happened to me at my first therapy session. My first therapy session, like when you sign up to see a therapist, you, you, you get your first appointment, they have you do like an intake evaluation form and they ask you all types of questions. Like I remember one thing that was on there was like, is there something that's bothering you that you need to talk about? And I was like, I'm not answering that. It was basically asking like, do you want to talk about it? It was asking on the sheet. It was basically asking a bunch of things. Like, is this what you want to talk about? Like, have you, do you have a history of this? Do you have a history of that? And I think I love half of that sheet blank. I was like, I'm not answering that. Like I put myself in therapy and I still was like, I'm not going to talk to you. Like, who do you think you are? Why do you want to know my business? Are you obsessed with me? Why? Why do you need to know all of this? So I was like uncomfortable answering a lot of those questions. Um, and it took me a while to get through that sheet. But to my surprise, my first therapy session, my therapist was really great. She, it was right after that joke was running on Twitter where it was like, um, black people get their superhero powers tomorrow. And she, that was the first thing she asked me. She was like, did you get your superpower? And I laughed and then I started crying. And I think the reason why I cried was because I think there's like a relief that comes with knowing that you are in a safe space, that it is literally their job not to judge you and it's their job to help you. And I think that's why I cried. And I think that's also why my friend cried because like, you know, a lot of the times when you're about to talk about your feelings, you censor yourself a lot. You censor yourself a whole lot because you don't want people to judge you. And even when people are like, I'm not going to judge you, I'm not going to judge you. They're always judging you because they're not trained not to judge you. It's human nature to judge, to make an assessment of a situation as you head into it. But I think 
when you have a therapist and you realize like, oh my God, like unless I've committed a murder, they're not going to judge me. Like that was really, that's such an insane concept that I think that's why I cried like my first time in therapy. I had such a hard time talking. I was so quiet that entire first session and like I don't even remember like when we got to talking how I would like I have a great therapist and I did a a lot of research when I signed up with her but if you're new to therapy and you feel like you have a big weight that you need to get off your shoulders it might not come out for a while because you are meeting a stranger you're getting to know a new person so there you're gonna be afraid you're gonna be nervous and you're going to be uncomfortable. And at some point, you're going to be resentful. Literally two months into therapy, I was like, this lady is not helping me. I was like, she's not helping me. I went into therapy thinking that like, oh, you're supposed to tell me what is wrong with me. Like, you need to tell me what's wrong with me so I can fix it. But a lot of it was really just her listening to me, which you don't realize how much people don't listen to until you have somebody listening to you. Um, a lot of it was her listening to me and not really giving advice, but just letting me get things off my chest and eventually getting things off of making my own evaluations. And then she would make an evaluation. Um, some therapists like to nudge. Um, but I will say like, not all therapists are, have the same style, but my therapist for sure, um, she, she likes to let me get to the conclusion on my own. And if I start heading into the land of delusion, she will kindly steer me back. But I think doing a lot of research, looking up who your therapist is, what people have said about them. And once you find a good therapist, um, I think once you find a good therapist, it kind of feels like taking your bra off. It really does. And like that's what that first cry really felt like for me. It was like taking my bra off after a long day and it's a bra that doesn't fit me in the first place. That's what that felt like. And like now like we're really friendly and like we're friends and like and I feel so happy when I see her because I know like this is a person who's gonna help me get to the root of my issue. They're gonna help me celebrate myself. They're going to help steer me in the right direction. Um So if you're like scared to go into therapy, don't be because they're not going to sit there and judge you and be like, this is what's wrong with you. This is why this is the thing that's the problem with you. Um, If you want somebody to do that, get a like a lifestyle coach, (laughs) get a lifestyle and and therapists and psychiatrists are two different people. Um, uh, I don't have a I don't have a psychiatrist, but (sighs) So that's what I have to say on that. I tried to answer that really carefully and as best as I could. The next question was, why are men? Don't know why are men. Um, Why are men annoying and stupid and annoying? Yes. Um, Somebody else said, what genuinely makes you happy? You know what makes me happy? What makes me happy is I love having a day where I know exactly what I'm going to do. I know exactly what I'm going to do. And everything goes to plan. I'm not late a single time. I eat the meal I want to eat and I'm satisfied. I get eight hours of rest. That genuinely makes me so happy. Like feel and having a good gym. Oh my God, I keep hitting this thing. And having a good session at the gym on top of that. Oh my God, a full day where I'm on time to everything. I'm not rushing. I'm calm. My playlist hits every single time it's sunny the meals I eat are good they're satisfying I get a full night's rest that's literally my perfect day like that may change as I become a cultured person but as of right now that's my perfect day and I've had a couple of days like that and I've been happy with that um somebody said view on self and how to reclaim your power and spirituality my view on self I feel like I've just finally come to grips with this, but I, I think for a long time, I kept thinking that I had to work against 
life. Like I had to work against existing. Like it was like I had to walk through a snowstorm or like walk through wind and get to my destination. And I think that's because I have an ego that likes to be controlling and to know where I'm going to go and likes to plan. And once I realized that like my existence is in harmony with the universe, that I would not be here if I, there was not a greater purpose in my life, no matter how long my life is or how short it is. I kind of like imagine my life as like me laying in the stream and just going where it takes me and knowing when I'm supposed to turn or stand up or put my, you know, look in the water. Like, um, I, it's funny because like I have suddenly felt a lot of power and letting go control over my life. Right. Um, in terms of spirituality, I don't know what terms you mean that in but for me so I'm a Christian and I grew up in a a Catholic household and not any type of Catholic girl it was a Haitian Catholic household and I don't know if you know anything about Haitians and or Catholics which are two of the most insane groups in the world I will fucking say it doesn't matter if you're a white Catholic or if you're a Christ or if a Christian Catholic or if you're a Haitian Catholic it's just like insanity on both sides and to mesh that is to really give your children trauma um but I grew up in like a super duper Catholic Haitian household and like my mother was literally um my mother was like super Christian like she wanted to be like the perfect Christian and which is impossible as long as you're human so for a while I was like I hate this and I had so many bad experiences at our church and like in my youth group and I just I just hated it you know what I'm saying so I was like I'm a fucking atheist for a while I was like I'm an atheist but like as I grew into my own and I like made my own relationship with Christianity and um I wouldn't say I'm a Catholic because those seven sacraments went out the window a while, a while ago for me. But um, I think once I made my own relationship with, like, my higher power, I, I, here's the thing. I was cool with the religion. I was good with everything. But I had this very weird and sterile belief where I felt, I think, like, I was just, like, fucking paralyzed by my belief of, like, you must do everything right. Like, Jesus is watching. He needs to send you a sign to do everything right. Like, literally every little decision I had to make, I'd be like, oh, my God, God, help me. Like, God, help me. And, like, I get it. Like, some people think that's a really great thing. But I think, like, for some people, that's really fucking paralyzing because you end up just not making any decisions at all. I was, like, cheaty from the good place. I couldn't make a fucking decision to save my life, quite literally. So, like... I would constantly be, like, praying and, like, looking for guidance and a higher power for everything. And, like, and that made me feel like everything had a huge purpose. Like, and while everything has a purpose and it serves a greater purpose, living every single moment of your life like everything is the end-all be-all is fucking tiring. And it's like, you don't get shit done. Like, you don't get anything done. So I, the moment that like, I was like, all right, fuck it. I'm throwing shit to the ceiling. Like, which is literally a couple months ago. The moment I was like, fuck that. Like I've prayed a million times for these things. I'm not praying for it again. You heard me the first time. I don't know what the fuck you doing. Cause I don't exist in your realm. I was like, I don't know what the fuck you're doing. Cause I don't exist. in like a spiritual plane, but I already asked. I already asked, I already asked for the, I asked for the Mercedes, I asked for the big house, I asked for the hot boyfriend, you heard me the first hundred times, I'm not repeating myself, Jesus, you heard me the first time, so I'm gonna stop bothering you, and I'm gonna let you do your thing, and as of right now, I'm gonna live my life, and try to figure this shit out, because you don't have no, you know, I, I can't dial you, bro. Like, I can't go 1-800-GOD. Like, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, I asked and I believe in you and I'm going to have faith that you're going to do what I asked for or even better because, like, you know what's best for me. So I'm like, I'm mm, not my business what you got going on up there. I'm just going to try to make shit work for me down here. And ever since I did that, per life's been pretty good. Life's been pretty good. I'm still waiting on the dude, though. I'm still waiting on my boyfriend. 
But I'm like, you know what? He's marinating. He's marinating. We got to let the marinade in. We got to let the marinade get into him. You know what I'm saying? God is working on my man. So, um, but I've seen so many things like come into fruition ever since I stopped worrying about it. And I was just like, you know, there's a higher power. I asked once. I ain't going to ask again. Please. <laughs> Like, I know you heard me. Just speed it up a little bit. You know what I'm saying? Jesus, if you could put a little pep in your skip, that would be nice. So, this fucking bug. Where, bro, once I, this timer goes off, I'm killing it. Go get Ting Murdered. Um, like, it's actually kind of nutty. Okay. The next question. Oh, and this person also said, love you. I love you too, baby. I love all of you guys so much. Mwah. Um, somebody said, is the Mercury retrograde beating your ass the way it's beating mine? That answer is 50-50, half yes, because somebody tried to pop up in my life and piss me off, and I let them piss me off for two seconds, and then I was like, you know what? No, fuck that. I'm a good person. I have too much to be happy about. You're not messing with me. But I also heard that the, there was some, one of the girls in the, in the solar system was doing something that is supposed to, the moon is in Taurus, I think. I'm probably so violently wrong I feel like that's what that girl said on TikTok but she also said that it's going to be easier to let things go during this time so while the mercury retrograde may be retrograding I also think it might also be easier to let things go during this time because the moon is in something else something um somebody said all this I date if he okay <laughs> Somebody said oldest I date. The oldest I date, I would date a 98-year-old man as long as I'm on his will. Do you understand? Okay? I ain't no shame in my game, baby. Ain't no shame in my game, baby. I know you heard of Anna Nicole Smith, my icon, the woman of my dreams. Yes, her. That man was in his wheelchair and they got married. And you know the thing is, like, I know so many people are like, there's no way you could love that old man. Yes, you can. There's different forms of love. And I feel like women, our ability to love people, if somebody treats us kind enough, we will love them. For real. These bugs are going to die. It's amazing. Women especially, it doesn't matter if the person is kind and loving and giving, we will love them. We really will. Like, the things I have overlooked in men because they were kind to me and, and had nice personalities. You could never call me shallow. You know what I'm saying? Oh, so, oldest I date. I mean, my ideal age right now is, like, between... I don't like dating people my age because I feel like they're just fucking idiots. But, I mean, men are mostly idiots. It doesn't matter their age. They are literally... I've seen 40-year-olds be bitches. Okay, you guys know this. So, but I feel like my ideal age, because I love a silver fox, and I love somebody who has a lot of life experience. So I feel like my, a good age would be like a non-asshole man would be like 45. That's like the oldest on that range. But like my ideal range is like between 30 and 45, and I'm 26, so it's like, you know. Um, somebody else said... Have you implemented any boundaries with men? Even if you didn't enforce them, what were they? Yes. And if you listen to my first episode on this podcast, you will know that I went on that date with that Russian man and a lot of, I think he had a, a super big issue with me because I wouldn't kiss him because he spent a lot of money on me and he spent a lot of time on me and I just wouldn't kiss him. Like, that was a boundary I was not willing to cross because I genuinely believe that I want to be friends with somebody before I kiss them in a romantic way. It doesn't matter if we're dating. If we can get through being friends for at least a month and with no sexual contact, with no kissing, I think we have a shot. But if you really, after three dates... You're getting upset with me because I don't want to kiss you or have sex with you. You're not the one for me. We have the rest of our lives to make out and fuck. I feel like I'm not asking a lot by asking you to wait a month. So that's a boundary that um, that one, you know, he had a super huge issue with that. He took big issue with that. And like other guys, too. But like I've also had men who were great with my boundaries. I've had guys who I I didn't. 
like I would be wishy washy on my boundaries and I would be like, I'm not having sex with you. And then, you know, she's getting hot and steamy and then it looks like we're about to have sex. And then I'm like, no, I take it back. I don't want to have sex. And then they're like, that's fine. That's cool. We can do something else. We can do anything else. And they were fine with it. And I felt safe with them. So I think sometimes I can be lenient with my boundaries, um, especially when I'm getting to know somebody. But I give you two solid chances before I'm like, fuck you. No. Like after fucking up twice, I have no interest in you. And to be quite frank, men start looking ugly to me. It doesn't matter how handsome they are. Um, so yeah, so I, I, I have a lot of boundaries that I try to implement when it comes to men specifically, because boy, do they love to really test, um, if you mean what you say. So you have about two chances with me and like, unless you have two left feet, there is no fucking reason why you should get off on the wrong foot twice. And I just don't have the patience for it. I genuinely never believe that men are as stupid as they try to believe they are or try to play they are. I don't believe in infantilizing infantilizing men um, because they will use every opportunity to be lazy and look dumb and make you think that they are incapable when truthfully they are fully capable. They are just lazy or assholes. So I have no interest in that game. Um, so I think it's really great to make boundaries and set them with guys. And also, you know what? Like if you make a boundary and like you find yourself thinking, oh, what if he's going to leave me? What if he, like, if you're not having sex with him and you're like, oh, what if he's going to leave and go have sex with somebody else? Babe, he was always going to leave and go have sex with somebody else. If that thought has even crossed your mind, if he does leave and go have and goes to have sex with somebody else, he was not for you. He was not for you. Just let it go. If you give somebody an ounce of freedom and they do bad behavior in that freedom, they were always going to do the bad behavior. And that is an early warning sign to let it go. Like a while ago, somebody, um, I, I made that little clip on TikTok where I said, I wrote him a letter. Can you believe I wrote him a letter? And so many girls were like, why, why would you like, aren't you embarrassed? And I'm like, actually no, because I expedited the process. Per. So, you know, I think a lot of times like you put up boundaries not because it's a cool thing to do, but because are you going to respect those boundaries? You're trying to find something out about that person. You're trying to protect yourself. And if somebody has issues with you protecting yourself, they won't for you, babes. They will never for you. You got to move on. You know what I'm saying? It's not your loss. It's theirs. It's not your loss at all, right? Um. So somebody said, how was I so lucky to have found your page? I don't know, babe thank the TikTok gods, you know? Um, somebody else said, things you wish you knew before your 20s. Wow, so many of them. One, um, Jesus is not a evil force who is waiting to punish you. Two, your parents don't know everything. Nobody knows everything. Three, knock those men off of a fucking pedestal, okay? Four, early 20s is the ideal time to understand what boundaries are understand what you want out of your relationships and honestly if I could go back to 20 like to 19 year old me oh my god first of all if I could go back to 19 year old me I would be like do not go to that college do not go to that school babes don't do it okay and um also I would tell myself to stop liking that boy that I thought was going to be my husband because he's not don't stop but also I would tell myself to get into therapy because if I knew the things I knew now at 20, bitch, I would be a powerhouse. I literally, I think like I would glow. I would glow. Beam, beams of light would shoot out of my eyes and out of my crotch. Like I would be so fucking powerful if I knew all the things now. Oh my God. If I had gotten therapy when I was in my twen- in my early 20s, <sighs> wow. I think about that a lot, honestly. Um, but I really wish that I had worked on changing my relationship with men before I entered my 20s. Because um, I lost my virginity at 19. And it didn't feel good. You know what I'm saying? Like, there are things in life that you experience. And, like, you don't know why it doesn't feel good. Like, like it feels funny in your bones. And you don't know why 
and you can't really put it into words. And I kind of wish I had had that. I wish I knew. I wish I had the knowledge I know now before I lost my virginity. Like, I always felt like every guy was going to be the one, you know? Like, I had this I had this weird thought that every guy I dated was going to be the one I'd marry. And they just never were. And I think if I knew that fact, I would save myself a whole lot of disappointment. I also wish I would have listened to myself um, a lot of the times when I felt like things were off in my friendships. Because I think a lot of the time, like, I would... I would blame myself when really the friendship was just fucking horrible. Also, oh my God, something else I wish I knew in my 20s. A couple things. Okay. I wish, and before I turned 20, I wish I knew that you should not be friends with girls who the first thing they want to talk to you about is sex. Mm Mm-hmm. Like sex with guys that they've been with or sex with guys that you've been with. People who have a weird interest in your sex life as friends are never good friends. I want you to know that right now because that was something I learned in a weird, hard way. Okay? Um, You should not be friends with people who you have both dated the same person. And, like, you know, like, shit happens. Like, you meet somebody, you both, like, fuck the same person, you both date the same person, whatever. But I also think if they keep bringing that up, red flag leave it alone leave that friendship alone um people who are who don't respect your boundaries who who if you have a friend and you're the butt of the joke all the time if you're around people and like you just don't feel like it doesn't feel good in your bones leave them be they're not for you like they're not your tribe like and it's okay to be friendless at a time it's okay to not spend time with people because you want to protect your energy you don't have to go everywhere and it's funny because like while I did not understand that I also was really great about leaving situations I was uncomfortable in so I give myself props for that Um, you're not missing out on anything. You're not missing out on anything. Uh, the people who look like they're having a great time in life, guess what? You don't realize it, but they're in their thirties. Okay. You're comparing yourself to a 30 year old. Okay. A lot of the times, a lot of the times I would see people on social media and I'd be so jealous of their life without realizing that they were in their thirties and that they had a whole decade in advance to figure it out and have that fun time. So just chill out. You're still a baby. You're, ne- you're literally not going to get anything figured out in your 20s. And anybody who says they have shit figured out in their 20s is a fucking liar. You don't got shit figured out. Okay? That's it. You're going to fuck up so much in your 20s. But it's a time for you to learn. Okay. Um, somebody said how to stop giving a fuck. Uh, I would say probably just realize that nobody is watching you and if they are watching you they're an asshole and that they should they they essentially should not be minding your business like literally if somebody is like cringing at what you do or like has something rude to say about what you do they are quite literally not minding they goddamn business like why are you as a person in my business you know Like, if, like, I feel like a lot of the times the reason why we give a fuck is because we're afraid of being embarrassed. Baby, embrace the cringe. Embrace the embarrassment. If somebody can ever say that they have never embarrassed themselves, they've never had an embarrassing moment, you're a fucking liar. You're a liar. And I don't believe anything that comes out of your mouth. Like, genuinely. Like, you're not going to make me feel bad for being myself, for having the fun I want to have. You're not, give me a a side eye. I don't give a fuck. A lot of the times when people are like, oh, that bitch is weird. Like, she's cringe. She's so cringe. It's because literally they are embarrassed of themselves. They do not have the bravery to do what you are doing. So therefore, they got to, they got to project that insecurity onto you. A lot of the insecurities that people have, they project 
project it onto you and they make you feel like you're doing something weird and wrong when truthfully you're not doing nothing weird and wrong you're just being yourself so if people are telling you you're being cringy so what fuck it embrace the cringe Like, there's a lot of shit that I see that I'm just like, yeah, that's fucking cringy. But I'm like, I damn well know that the reason I find it cringy is because I could never do it. Because I could never do it. I'm not brave enough. I, I, like, that guy, there's that guy who keeps, like, dancing around, that big buff guy who keeps dancing around in public. I'm like, oh, my God, nigga, stop. I'm embarrassed. But I'm like, I would never do that because I'm not brave enough. I don't want to be brave enough to do that. I don't. But that's how you stop giving a fuck is realizing that, one, half of the time nobody's watching you and two if an asshole is watching you they're in your business and they're probably jealous of what you're able to do and what they're not able to do um what was my worst romantic experience with a man i've got so many it's all of them i've never had a great romantic experience with a man my worst romantic experience with a man Oh, no. I know what it is. I was hooking up with this guy once. Yeah, I was hooking up with this guy once. And I was like, is it in? Yeah. I don't know. Like, he'd sent me a dick pic before. And I feel like it didn't. It just. It looked. It looked. Okay, <laughs> you get the point. Get the point. Um, that was one of my worst. I think that was like, that was not my worst, but like I'm trying to keep it light. Like, um, uh, somebody said you should give tips on self care slash self worth, healing and stuff this time. I think the biggest tip I could give with like self worth and self healing is understand that it takes time. It takes a lot of time. You're not going to wake up tomorrow and feel like you're worth a million bucks. Like a lot of the times you have to lie to yourself and you have to fake it till you make it because you're genuinely not going to feel like you're worth it. You're just not going to feel like that. You're going to be like, oh, here I go again. I have to stand in front of the mirror and do my affirmations and I don't believe it. A lot of the time you're going to feel like that, but then you're going to have a moment where you're going to have a moment where your first thought in a situation that's either awful or stressful is something so positive on you, about yourself when in the past you would have dogged yourself and you would have been unkind to yourself and it's literally going to shock you like I had one of those moments the other day where like I was texting my friend and I was like um I was like, you know what? At the end of the day, it doesn't matter because I win because I get to leave with me because nobody owns me because I am in charge of my life and I'm in charge of my future and I win. I always win because I'm the fucking prize. And I was shocked because I meant it. I was like, oh, I thought she said that and she meant that shit. So like I can confidently tell you that if I said that a year ago, I wouldn't believe myself. If I said that six months ago, I wouldn't believe myself. But, like, it's been gradual. Like, there have been smaller statements that I've said that I'm like, oh, I believe that. I didn't doubt that for a second. And you always know when you're lying to yourself. You know when you're lying to yourself. But when you tell yourself something that's positive and you know it's the truth, it's a really nice feeling. So I think just remembering that it takes time and it's a gradual effort. And even if you think that there's not a lot of change that's being done, You are what you think. You really are what you think. And I think a lot of us don't realize that. Like, a lot of us don't realize that. But, like, think about how little you understand about life, about the universe itself. You don't know much. You really don't know much. And even people who are so much smarter than us, like fucking Einstein, people who somehow were, like, able to tap their minds and, like, create, like, not create the concept, but, like, understand the concept of, like, there being 10 dimensions and possibly more, you think about how small th- smart those people are and how much knowledge they have and just how little of that knowledge is the actual representation of the greater fucking picture. Like, all of 
Stephen Hawk's knowledge and all of Darwin's knowledge and all of um, Einstein's knowledge, all of those people, the greatest minds on earth, is literally probably like one puzzle piece of a million piece puzzle. You think about how little we know and it's like, if I told you that you are what you think and that your mind controls everything around you, what's the what's the big deal in not believing me? The other option is to keep dogging on yourself. Do you really wanna keep doing that? So why not try something different? And it's been proving that like, the FBI did a file on it, that manifestation works, that these things work, positive self-talk works. And if anything, I'm a testimony. I'm a testimony to it. Um, you know, I think these things work. And and I will say that I went into therapy like very determined to have a good outcome and to have a good experience because I was just tired of living the way I was living. Um, so going into therapy, I was like, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go. I'm ready for the good life I deserve. But I also understood that there were a lot of mental blocks. Like, like here's a great fucking example, right? So my, um, I got a, I got my big girl job, right? I got my big girl job. And prior to getting my big girl job, I'd been applying to jobs for four fucking years since I graduated college. Okay. I've been applying to big girl jobs. Okay, the only reason why I got that job was literally because my friend posted on Facebook that they were looking to fill a position and um, and to inquire within. My first thought was, "Ooh, let me write my information down. And I went to write my information down. And then I my second thought was, no, don't even do that. They It was posted half an hour ago. They probably already found somebody. She knows so many smart people. There's somebody probably more qualified than you. Yeah, just, you know, it's fine. Just, it's whatever. Like, just leave it alone. My next thought after that was, shut the fuck up, you pussy. Write your information down. And I was like, whoop, okay. So I went and I wrote my information down. And that lady is responsible for me having a job now. A big girl job. Somebody said, would you ever do ASMR content? I love your voice and I always fall asleep to you. It's so funny because I think this person commented that on one of my TikToks and I was like, you know, most people don't want to hear that like, um, that somebody fell asleep listening to them, but I do because I try to keep it calm, you know, and I'm glad that like my voice is a calming presence for you. Mwah. Um, I don't know if I would ever do ASMR, but I think this is about probably as close as we're going to get. So, for now, this is it. Um, what Somebody said, what is my opinion on open relationships? I don't really have an opinion on one, on, on one, on it because I'm a serial monogamist. I've always loved monogamy. I personally don't think that I could ever be in an open relationship, so... I don't think it's really my place to speak on it. I feel like it's not my life. If that works for some people, it works for some people. But all I can say is don't do anything that makes you uncomfortable. If you're comfortable being in an open relationship, be in an open relationship. If you're not comfortable being in one, don't be in one. That's it. I don't really have an opinion. Um, somebody said fave TV show slash movie. Oh my God, this is a hard question because I don't remember the last thing I watched. I'm watching Ozarks right now. I think fave TV show would be Game of Thrones before. It was disgustingly ruined. Okay. Um, I love High Maintenance. Another HBO. Really good one on HBO. I love... What's another show? Oh my god. Wait. No, I know what my favorite TV show is. It's Succession. I love Succession. Because first of all, I would... In a heartbeat, I would fuck Kendall Roy. Oh my god, I can fix him. I can literally fix Kendall Roy. I'm so serious. All of it. I would take the five I would take Kendall a Kendall Roy dinner over five hundred thousand dollars. I'm so serious. That yeah, I would take that. Succession is my fucking shit. My favorite movie is Stardust. That movie always puts me in a great mood. Um, oh my god, I love Anna Karenina. Anna Karenina is one of my favorite fucking movies. Aaron Taylor Johnson is in that movie, and he's my baby father. Okay. 
I also could fix Aaron Taylor Johnson. I could also get him away from that old bird. He is so good in Anna Karenina. That scene, I love, first of all, I grew up in the, I was a, I was a drama kid. I was a drama kid. So I love film. I love theater. And like watching those two things intertwine with my sexy man, with my sexy husband on the stage. Oh my God. And he's blonde. And the way they make his eyes so fucking blue in that movie. And, of course, my girl, Kira Knightley, is in that bitch. Oh, my God. Anna Karenina is my shit. And I love The Great Gatsby. You're seeing a theme here. A bitch love a period piece. Let me tell you something. Period piece is about rich people. I'm good. I'm good for the day. I'm good. That's all I need to do. That's all I want to watch. That's all I care about. That's all that has my attention. Um... I love Grey Gatsby. The soundtrack to Grey Gatsby is amazing. The scene when Jay brings in all the flowers. When Daisy is sitting on the fucking bed and Jay is throwing the shirts. And I read the book and I love this part in the book. And she's like, she's like, the shirts, the beautiful, beautiful shirts. They're so beautiful. And then she starts crying and Jay's like, what's wrong? And she's like, the shirts, they're just all so beautiful, Jay. art it's art okay it's art I love that I one I love F Scott Fitzgerald so good to go but I love that and I love I think her name is like Carrie Mulligan I can't remember her last name but the way she just is like she's so soft and when she's like I hope it's a girl a beautiful stupid girl and I'm like yes I hope it's a girl like <laughs> I love that movie. I love The Great Gatsby. Hey, somebody said, how do I not let my past relationships, oh, how do I not let my past experiences affect my current dating life? Paranoia sucks. I feel you hard as fuck. But the thing is, and I don't know, I can only speak for myself. And I don't know if this is the right advice or not, but I just know this is what I'm doing. I will let you know if it works in the future. Um, at this point, I've gotten to the point where I'm literally just like, men are people. They are, okay, here's a couple facts. Men live shorter lives than women. And I'm 100% sure that the reason why women live longer than men is because the men in their lives die. And stop causing them stress, therefore extending their life, okay? Um, Men are so many things that are just, like, not great. And uh, recently having knocked them off the pedestal of whatever patriarchy pedestal I had them up on, I realized that they're just fucking people. They're just people who have been giving them free pass to be assholes and to make awful decisions and to still live great lives, okay? So... I've realized that the next hundred guys I date may not be great, okay? Maybe there is one woman out there and one man out there who had a son and raised him correctly and raised him to be a good person, but until the time comes for our paths to cross, I may encounter a lot of assholes. That being said, I keep an open mind to where life takes me, where I will go, and I am choosing to believe that for as long as I live in my purpose on this planet and I go where the universe takes me in my purpose, I see no reason for me not to cross paths with my soulmate. I don't think it's impossible for me to believe that my soulmate is out there. I just haven't met them yet. And I don't think it is a coincidence that I'm doing all of this self-work, learning my boundaries, setting high standards for myself that in turn I will set for somebody else. If you cannot meet the bare minimum of my standards, you're not the right person. I think I'm learning these things because like the universe is encoding a filter system in me so I don't end up with the wrong person because I sometimes you know I see you can see it you watch people's lives and you just observe and you can you you pinpoint oh that's the moment when 
things started to take a turn. And what was going on in that person's life? Oh, they got married to some ass wagon. And it threw the whole course of their life off balance. I don't want to be that person. I don't want to have to endure that pain for no reason. So I think as long as I live in my purpose, I keep my standards high, I and I follow those same standards for myself, I don't see why I wouldn't meet a wonderful man. Um, but I also have to acknowledge that I need to remove the mindset that every guy I meet is my soulmate because that, I feel, is where you fall into desperation and you settle for anything. I hope that answered the question. Somebody said, what's my sign? Girl, I'm a Scorpio. I'm calling um, my sun sign is a Scorpio. My rising is in Pisces. No, I lied. My moon is in Pisces and my rising is in Scorpio. It's all water and I cry every day. Per, but I'm sexy and mysterious. Per, but I be crying while I'm being sexy and mysterious. Somebody said how to be extra confident without automatically thinking you're better than everybody else. Your confidence should not really have anything to do with anybody else. Okay? Um, Your confidence is about you. Your confidence is not about being in competition with anybody else. It's not looking to anybody else for their approval, for their validation, for anything else. Your confidence is about you. It's about how you feel about yourself. So... How to be extra confident without automatically thinking you're better than everybody else. If you think you're if you think you're better than everybody else, I think that would kind of mean you're comparing yourself to other people. And you really shouldn't be comparing yourself to other people. I think the only person you should be comparing yourself to is yourself. Am I better than I was yesterday? And the answer hopefully is yes. So I think keep continuing to focus on yourself, building on yourself, and not worrying about what anybody else is doing and Thinking you're better than anybody else should not be a problem. Okay. This is crazy because I have like six pages of this to go. Um, have I ever felt emotional numbness after dirty dating disappointments and hurt? Yes, literally right now. Um, I don't know. I think sometimes things happen and you just don't feel like giving any more of yourself out there. Um, and I've definitely felt that. And I'm just, it's tiring. It's exhausting. I think you're extremely valid to feel that. Um, I don't know. I think it's just a part of life. But I think you also have to keep an open mind and an open heart. But to not let down your guard so much that like you get hurt every time you meet somebody new. Um, how do I get over somebody I never dated? When you find out, let me know. Mm-hmm. Um, why are white men more comfortable approaching me than black men? That is a loaded question. I don't, I can't speak for black men. I really can't. I don't know what the fuck these dudes got going on. But the thing is, like, I think all men are fucking annoying and ridiculous. They just have different ways of being annoying and ridiculous. Like, on a scale of 1 to 10, the shit that black men do that annoys me is at a 10. But on a scale of 1 to 10, the shit that white men do that annoys me is also at a 10. And on a scale of 1 to 10, the shit that, like, Hispanic and Arab men do that annoy me is also at a fucking 10. So it's like they're just annoying in different fucking ways. They're still annoying, though. Okay? Dogs or cats, do I have any pets? Yes, I have a doggy. Her name is Precious. She thinks she's a person. Per. She's very high maintenance. She's just like her mommy. She cries about everything. And everything is inconvenient to her. Per. Her mommy's child. Woof. Um, uh, dating different types of men and opinion in each race. Um, they all assholes. What do you want me to say? <laughs> I have encountered so many assholes in every single race. Y'all, I have dated white men. I have dated black men. I have dated Arab men. I have dated Hispanic men. I have dated Asian men. I have dated all the colors of the rainbow. And you know what is the most common thing across them all? They are assholes. Um, in different ways. Um, Somebody said, will I ever do other kinds of YouTube videos? I've been waiting for my eyeliner, to, for your eyeliner tutorial forever. 
<laughs> yes, I am. I just have to get the courage to do it. I have to get the courage, the time, and figure out my setup to do it. Because I am a perfectionist, and I will cry if I try to film a full, like, get ready with me makeup tutorial video, and it doesn't go well. I will cry. But I am planning on trying to do something different, because I've been wanting to, like, branch out a little bit. So, yes yes i just go and figure it out okay it's it's scary it's scary to do things you're not used to doing all right have a little bit of patience with me please um somebody said saddest night of my life and what did i learn oh not a big i had snot coming out of my nose this whole time <sighs> the saddest night of my life the night started off bad the night started off awful it started off lonely and I see the parts in that night where like so many like basically I don't want to like tell it and I'm not going to but essentially this person um, kept me waiting they were supposed to we're supposed to go out um, to a bar which was their idea and we'd been friends for a minute and they wanted to take me out on a proper date and and it was their idea and they were like please like I want to see you it was a lot of love bombing quickly and they were like come out to this bar um and I went to the bar and they didn't they weren't there and they're like oh I'm 15 minutes away 15 minutes passed oh I'm 10 minutes away 10 minutes passed. I'm two minutes away. Two minutes passed. Then, like, another, oh, I just need another 10 minutes. 10 minutes passed. I waited there for, like, an hour and a half. And and even, like, at a point in that night, like, this guy came up to me and he was like, are you waiting for somebody? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, you've been waiting for a while. <laughs> and at that point, like, I was like, I should go home. But then I was like, no. What if he's the one? So I kept waiting. And then finally he showed up. And when he showed up, he literally was so drunk and sweet of liquor and then when the night ended when I was like alright I'm going home because I've been out for four fucking hours and two of them was spent waiting for you he was like I'm so sorry I'm so sorry like I got so scared just like a bunch of shit and I think and that kept happening like that 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 behavior like kept going on through the night and and you know then the coercion I think you can you can see how easily like that happened I think what like really upset me afterwards was trying to convince myself that like that was normal that I was okay with it when I wasn't I really tried to justify it and I think like looking back at it what makes me super sad is like that I just I wish I had loved myself more in that time I wish I had loved myself more and I loved my time more and I wish I had left and I wish I had felt a little bit of humiliation when that guy was like you've been waiting for a while because then I could have been like yeah I have been waiting for a while you're right let me go home but I don't know I just wasn't at that place so that was the saddest um night for me okay and last but not least final question who is your celebrity y'all somebody asked this in my live the other night and 
I think it's the same person that asked it this time too. Somebody asked in my life the other night and I answered. First of all, I said Aaron Taylor Johnson because he is my celebrity coach. He's my he's my baby for the okay. I can fix him. I can get him away from that old woman. He is my he is so fine. Everything about him is amazing. His voice, his tenderness, all of it. And then I was like, my other celebrity crush is Jack Carlo. And the girls were not having it. The girls were not having it. They was throwing tomatoes in the comments. They were like, boo, for like the next 15 minutes, all I saw was boo, thumbs down, thumbs down, tomato, 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 brick. They were like, hell no, not my sister. Somebody was like, we've lost our good sis. And I was trying to defend myself by saying that it was his personality that I liked, which I do like his personality. I think he has big dick energy. Like it's giving, you can't make me uncomfortable. You can't make me question myself. I know myself. And I always appreciate that in a person. But the girls were not having it. They were not having my thirst for this Caucasian man on my Black Girl Podcast Live. They were not having it. They was not eating it up. And I was getting pelted with tomatoes left and right. And it was so funny because I told my cousin this today. And he was like, why didn't you say Michael B. Jordan or something? I was like, they wouldn't have believed me. They would have not believed me. They would have been like, liar. We've heard you speak before, bitch. You're a liar. And also, like, he's he's also just not my type. Like, even as a black guy, he's not my type. Like, I, he's just not my type. He's not my type. You know what I'm saying? Like, my type is so different across all rainbows and colors. And let me tell you something. Boys, if you're listening, this is the only time you're allowed to listen to this podcast. I don't have a preference. Okay? As long as you're nice, you're over 6 foot 4, you're cute, you're funny... Um, you have a nice mom. I'm always looking for extra parents. I love mommies. Um, and you plan on gifting me a, a Porsche truck for my birthday. Um, and maybe a Chanel purse, you know? Actually, no, we're boycotting Chanel. Lies. Um, I don't know, some cute and designer, some of those jewelry, you know what I'm saying? Um, as long as you meet those qualifications and you're a kind person, like, I feel like that goes to say, but like, I don't know, the niggas is deft. Okay. They're daft. So I have to reiterate that the men are daft. So I must iterate that you've also got to be kind. You've also got to be nice. You've got to be generous. You've got to be loving. Like you've got to be all these things. So that's like the bare minimum. I feel like the bar is on the floor. Everything else I just said is above you know, that's rising the bar of a little bit higher. So, boys, if you meet any of those qualifications, don't DM me. Let's just try to... No, I was going to say something, but if you're crazy, you finna take it the wrong way. Um, Don't DM me unless you meet those qualifications, please. Because I'm getting some wild-ass DMs, and I'm like, I'm not answering this. I'm actually deleting it. I've been doing that a lot, deleting DMs. Um, But, yeah, so... That was the podcast for today. As normal, leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. The Valentine's Day giveaway is still going on. The Valentine's Day giveaway is still going on, babes. So leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. Spotify does not have an ability for me to look at who's left a review or a rating. It's quite stupid. So I wouldn't be able to know if you did anyways. I wouldn't be able to pick a winner. So you've got to do it on Apple Podcasts. Leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcasts to be entered in the Valentine's Day giveaway. If you enjoy the podcast, share it with your friends. Should I do a different accent for each like thing I'm going to say? Yes. This is Kylie. If you enjoy the podcast, share it with your friends. I'm definitely going to share it with my best friend, Stormy. Stormy, baby. You like to listen to what mommy listens to, Stormy? <laughs> okay. Um, leave a rating and review. If you're watching on YouTube, subscribe and leave a like, right? And if you like what you're listening, share it with your friends. Share it on social media. Um, 
uh, follow me on the Twitter at Wardess, W-O-R-Z-E-S, Wardess. That was not a good one. We're going to nix that one. Um, and if you want to see what I'm doing on the daily, like Q&A's and stuff, um, follow me on Instagram. It's at Vine Philo, V-I-N-E-P-H-I-L-O. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, I don't know if you understood my African accent just then, but I'm going to say it again. Um, you can follow me on Twitter at W-O-R-D-E-S, the word ass. Um, if you think I belong in the loony bin, go ahead and call 911. They might ignore you, but either way, um, right. So, go ahead and do that. Follow me, and don't forget to leave a rating and a review on Apple Podcast to be entered into the Valentine's Day giveaway. I'm trying to give y'all treats, y'all. I'm trying to give y'all... I'm trying to give you what you deserve for Valentine's Day. You know what I'm saying? Because I love y'all. I'm loopy as fuck. It is way past my bedtime. It is 11.04, okay? Um, so, yeah. Alrighty. I love you, babes. Bye. Have a nice weekend. I love ya. And follow me on TikTok. D-Phil. D-P-H-I-L-E. I love ya. Goodbye. Have a nice one. And see.